Welcome to Trek Trav, I'm Trav. This is Earth Final Conflict, Season 1, Episode 3, Miracle. And I might say one of the best reasons why I prefer this show over Andromeda. So stick around, like, comment and subscribe, and let's talk about the episode. So this episode opens up with a guy in a wheelchair talking about the Church of the Companions. We meet Boone, who is just walking down the street, just sort of meets up with the guy of the Church of Companions, shakes his hand. They know each other, obviously, uh, maybe an informant or something. Uh, and then he sees a woman up on a building. Her name is Julie, and she's about to kill herself. So he goes up to talk her down, and he gets like a CVI sort of impression uh, that shows that her parents died when she was younger and she just can't go on. Uh, we're introduced to the fact that she has uh, robotic hands and Boone manages to talk her into not killing herself. Uh, which it's really good to see Boone sort of just caring. Uh, and she is taken to a mental hospital. Uh, Boone obviously talks to Da'an. Da'an empathizes and goes, I don't understand how you feel so much pain to kill yourself. Boone talks about the troubles, and it's a really interesting moment where Da'an's sort of expressing empathy for a human. Boone is in his office, and then Julie has got out of her psych treatment 72 hours and comes to see Boone, and pretty much says, you need to care for me now because I need to kill myself and you saved me. It's a nice moment of bonding. Uh, Boone in this episode comes across completely different to the first two, where he was a bit, because he's obviously found out who killed his wife, he's open a bit more to new connections. And he meets Julie and immediately after seeing her, he's sort of like, let's meet for lunch, let's talk about it. He wants to be a support for her. So, Da'an, while talking about this, maybe runs across a suggestion that uh, they can regenerate her hands, of which, uh, Boone isn't entirely comfortable with, but Dan's like, no, you need to do this. This will look good for the companions and the Talons on Earth. And Boone's like, no, we need to give her the choice. Dan says, no, don't give her the choice. But Boone gives her hands down the choice. Uh, and she wants to do it. Of course she does. She thinks the Talons are, mag are magnificent. She doesn't know any other thing. So she goes in for this operation. It's a really cool thing where they put the hands in gel and then when they come out, she has full hands. There's a new tail on introduced called Mepeg or something. It's a really weird name and it's televised. So this is a miracle uh, that she sort of expresses. So she goes, oh, this is amazing. You can see the joy in her eyes. Then to all the doctors, there was a press conference and Julie comes out, shows her hands, and she's sort of shaking the hands of the doctor, turns around and sees an aura around Da'an. Similar to the aura you see in old oil paintings of Jesus or gods. And we run into the theme of this episode, called, this episode, which is miracles and religion and faith and how dangerous they can be. <clears throat> Da'an expresses, and there's a moment where Da'an talks about how you kill each other over beliefs. And she doesn't understand that, or he doesn't understand that. The young one sees what her mind tells her to see. Those among you who share this simple vision, you regard them as saints or fools. You actually slaughter each other over questions of the spirit. Is it different on other planets? It is different. Uh, spiritual belief is not something they're familiar with, but I think there's a sort of a glimmer that Da'an recognizes that can be used for power. Julie, being Julie, is excited. She's listed as a miracle. Everyone seeing it thinks it's amazing. It's almost divine. Uh, then we run into a guy named Travis, and I'm aware that I'm named Travis, but I do, I'm an atheist. Um, and he runs the Church of the Companions, and Julie obviously wants, she's interested in it because she thinks that Da'an and the Companions are divine. She goes there and the guy's like, oh, you're amazing, you are proof of the miracle, you are this, you are that, flattering her. And you see that he's sort of talking her into 
he's thinking about what she can do for him in prosperity buy our merchandise buy our stuff very similar to stuff going on in american churches in general especially the more extreme ones uh, Julie's a bit apprehensive and Boone finds her. She was meant to do a TV interview, but Boone finds her and sort of goes, look, she needs to choose to do this. You don't get to choose for her. Julie's like, well, no, I think the companions are divine. This is a miracle. I can feel things. And the Travis, the church dude, he's all about just solving the problem. So what we find out in this episode is basically, I think Boone is an, he, he doesn't say he's an atheist. But he says, he quotes a Bible sentence and he goes, oh, you're a religious man. He goes, no, I just have a good memory, which seems to think that he lost his religion when he was a kid. He's not religious anymore. The Travis is one of those, I want to say, because it's a small budget show, but he's meant to be one of those evangelical extreme pastors or priests who's all about buy our merchandise, buy our stuff, give me money, give me money, give me money. Uh, we have an interesting moment in this episode where Boone is going through different religious ideologies and he starts merging pictures of like Egyptian pharaohs and uh, vi visions of Christ and visions of other religious figures and composites them and they look like the Talons. Now Work has so absorbed you. Studying you, Devlin. May I ask you a question? Have you been here before? The souls of our two species have a long history on many different planes. Now, you can composite lots of different things and they can look like lots of different things. It's just compositing. But in this episode, it's meant to imply the Talons have been here for centuries, if not thousands of years. And Daan's answer to this when he's looking this up is essentially our destinies have been entwined in all dimensions, which is an interesting com comment. And I think it leads to the, the general interest on why the companions are there in the first place. What do they need from the humans? And it's, it's not as laced through this episode, but this episode is very much focused on religion. So, Julie doesn't actually go to another interview. Where is she? What's going on? Uh, and it turns out that her hands are degrading. They, they, pretty much as soon as she got out of there, they were degrading 10 times faster or 50 times faster than they should be. And she sort of, you see her walking around with her hands in her pockets. She runs into the guy in the wheelchair from the beginning, who's Boone's friend, and, and he tells her, look, she's walking down this way. Julie's going to the Church of the Companions to meet Travis because she wants to tell him about her hands degrading. And they look all mangled. It's really, really, it's actually a really cool effect. And... Uh, she shows Travis and he's like, he wants to hide it. So everyone, so at the same time, Sandoval and Daan are discovering that the hands would degenerate as well. And there's a rush on to get to her because companions don't like showing failure. They want, they want people to think that they're perfect because it helps their motivations. Uh, we have Boone and Lily breaking in to try and save her. And we know that Travis the pastor is going to hand over Julie to the companions. So... Uh, Boone and Lily thankfully get to her first, take her out, and they're like, "What? We, we don't know what to do in terms of, if the companions think they've done wrong, then it's going to be bad for her. She's going to be killed. And she's like, why? You work for the companions. Why? And they talk about, they talk about how, yeah, but they don't like the way the companions do some things. And they talk about what is a miracle. And Julie, while believing it's still kind of a miracle, understands that this kind of religious fanaticism is too much. Um, she gets this miracle because she got that opportunity to have hands again, but she's losing that. So she ends up going onto a news program and talking about how she believes it's a miracle, but she doesn't take it back. We learn very, we learn that even though this miracle failed, a lot of people believe more now that the, the Talons and the, the companions are going to help the planet and they're worshiping them and it's an interesting take because julie has to go on tv and praise the companions while admitting the failure of the procedure and so the the companions kind of get what they want which is popularity and she gets to be sort of put to one side and she won't doesn't need to be killed it's very much implied with sandoval's aunt she's going to be killed because of that failure and the, and the companions don't really know how to handle this situation because they don't want to ruin their own image to the humans. 
Sandoval will do whatever Diane says. And at the end, we have Boone and we have Julie talking and they talk about what they want for themselves. And Boone, Boone talks about his feelings. It's, this episode actually sort of defines his character better than the first two did. Uh, but it was a really fun and very science fiction and very relevant today episode. And I'm sure relevant when it came out in the 90s about how religious fanaticism can cause people to do terrible things. People don't want to lose money. People don't want to lose power. People don't want their reputation to be damaged. And what unfortunately is happening, it happens in America. And this is, this is the really, the, out of the three episodes I've watched so far, this is the strongest. It has a plot. There's a reason for it. It references today while being set slightly in the future. Da'an's motives are unclear, but you see Da'an starting to sort of empathize with humans in difficult situations. Uh, Boone's emotion comes out. He's a bit more friendly, a bit more helpful. Uh, and overall, it's, it's a really great episode of Earth Final Conflict. And I actually remember a lot from this one because I remember watching it the first time and thinking, this is a great episode. Uh, but otherwise, everything's used well. Dawes and uh, Dawes wants to save her as well. He's in it briefly, sort of, he's in it one scene. Uh, Dawes is the one who sends Lily and Boone to sort of help her. There, there's a lot of motivations, all of them wanting to save face and help Julie, but a lot of them are selfish. And Boone and Lily are the only ones, really, that are not being selfish about their motives. They want to help Julie and they want to help her move past this. Uh, Otherwise, it is a great episode. For the third episode in a series to deal with um, a hot religious topic and organized religion and how it can be negative and affect people and how people can be fanaticized by religion and belief, it is a very good episode. Make sure to go watch it. It is on Amazon Prime, apparently, in the US. I'm not sure if it is here in Australia. Uh, otherwise, you can find the box sets online. I've got seasons one through five in a box set and uh, others. And make sure to come back to Trek Trav every Sunday because we'll be doing Earth Final Conference reviews. And make sure to come back this Tuesday for Star Trek Enterprise. We're starting the review from chronological series order. So we're gonna do Star Trek Enterprise first. Come back to Trek Trav, subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you next time.